Get ready, guys. The very first Doctrine and Devotion Conference happening. First and last. Stop that. It's not going to be the last. In well, fact, we've know. already got two scheduled. We've got one now, and we've got one in November scheduled. I know, but no one's going to want to do it in 2018. No, listen. The very first of many Doctrine and Devotion Conferences is happening. And if happening, you're wanting to get us, people... Am I, am I doing this? Or you yeah, I know. This? I'm just saying, though, you got you to gotta, like ask us ahead of time. People, some suckers have been asking us, hey, man, you got to want to come right now? Here's the truth. I get one to two invitations to speak every week yeah, and I get for like, 2017. Yeah. And guess what? I'm all booked up. Exactly. I get three to four, and I keep Do you really? Them. I tell them no. I you can't. You get three to four invitations every week. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. <laughs> March, I'm, I'm big time. Everyone wants the Mar- fofo. <laughs> Everybody wants the fofo. March. Fofo show. March 11th, mm. the very first Doctrine and Devotion conference called Confessional Piety is going down in St. Charles, Illinois, west of Chicago, Illinois. We want you guys to come to this. It's going to be a really good time. We have Dr. Jim Renahan, the Jim original. Jim the man. Now, listen, I didn't come up with this. Pastor Michael Beck in New Zealand came up with this because he's known Dr. Renahan much longer than I have. But he would say that Dr. Renahan is... The Reformed Baptist original gangster. Yeah, the OG. So um, he's going to be there teaching, preaching on confessionalism, why it's important, how it matters to the Christian faith. I'm going to preach one session out of the four on the confessional Christian. And I think he might be making available to all those that attend a little something. A little something something. we can't really talk about. There are some free books coming. Free resources. Free free books. Free resources. Not giving free massages. I'm just saying resources. Although I bet. A Reformed Baptist like Jim Renahan could give a great massage. You, but you want to bet that? I would bet. You want to bet? How are we, are go- we betting or no? So you want to bet me? I'm asking, are we betting? Okay, but I'm asking you. Yeah. What's the bet? You're, you're oh, bet. I'll bet you a cigar. I know, but hold on. You, give, me, give me the terms. Are you saying that you can get Renahan to give no. you a, <laughs> no, no, no. a back massage? I'm saying massage. he could give a very good one. Well, how are we going to quantify that? How are you going to be able He's to... He's got strong hands. Okay, no. All right, keep going. So... If you come to this conference, Confessional Piety, on March 11th, you're going to get free books, you're going to get a free journal, you're going to have amazing teaching from Dr. Renahan that you can't get anywhere else, and there's going to be fellowship afterwards if you're down. So go to doctrineanddevotion.com slash conference and register while you can. People are registering. It's filling up. It's going to be amazing. This ain't going to be like those other conferences like LMG, T4G, whatever it is. (laughs) Those are all great conferences. Gospel Coalition, whatever. That's fine. If you like the same guys at every conference, those are awesome. We've got Dr. Jim Renahan coming. It's going to be Oh, because he's so original. He ain't other conferences. He is the original gangster. Oh, fair enough. Yep. All right. Go there. Register. See you then. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion. Is that what we call it? That's what we call it these days. It is a podcast that explores uh, Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. Perspective. Yeah, okay, I think that's yep. a good idea. Let's, let's do that. All right, let's we'll do that. that. My name is Joe Thorne. I am the pastor, the lead pastor. Lead pastor. Uh, which means I have no extra say at all. It just means I do most of the preaching at Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler. Mm-hmm. Where at are you? Redeemer Fellowship. <laughs> Chill in the blanks, people. All right, so he is either... An elder candidate mm-hmm. at this point, mm-hmm. or he is an executive pastor at this point. Uh, yeah, you know. It will depend. Like, when this episode drops, yep. right, and we know when it drops, mm-hmm. it's going it's going to drop uh, on the, uh, what, the 16th. It's a Thursday. The, that's when you guys are listening to this, probably, on Thursday, the 16th of February. By then, hopefully, Jimmy has finished the massive systematic theology that he has to yeah. write, plus the oral exam. Like when we say, oh, oral exam? There is an oral exam. Yeah. You know there is. You, I know. You, yeah, there is. I keep so forgetting. after it's all, so he may be executive pastor, or he just may be elder candidate still. Either way, or I might just not be allowed, and I will just be a church member. You will just be the monkey. We will just call you. No, I'll just go back we, to being a church member. Yeah, you are a member, and you'll be our monkey, and you'll do whatever we say. Hey, man, how's it going? Uh, you know, it's going good. It's Valentine's bit, Day. Valentine's. How'd it Day. go? Did you take your wife out? Oh, oh, I took my wife. Listen, I, I took care of my wife. We listen. We don't play. Even, you, know, you know what? I know. You think Valentine's Day. You guys think Valentine's That's a fake holiday. It's a Hallmark holiday. Yeah. Get on it. Yep. Doesn't matter whether well, no, it's I fake hope or you, not. I hope you got on it. Yeah, because um, if you didn't, you missed out, and your wife noticed. I'm telling you right now. Your yeah. wife might be like, I don't care about That's that. not really loving. Yeah, no. No, it's not. Obviously, your wife's always going to say, I don't care. Yeah. But really, she cares. Yeah. If, you have, if you're married by now and haven't realized that when your wife says, 
I really don't care. Do you realize that she cares? You've been married like three years. You still haven't figured it out yet. Um, here's the thing. You're going to be in for a rude awakening. You need to look for opportunities to love and bless your yep. wife. And I know some of you guys are thinking like, well, what about me? What about me on Valentine's Day? Shut up. Nobody cares about you. You yep. think about your wife. Now, you need to look for extra opportunities to bless your wife. To yeah. Take care of her. And you know what? Valentine's Day, as cheesy and fake as it is, don't matter. You can use it as an opportunity. Exactly. So what did you do, Jimmy? You know, uh, it's hard for us to get babysitters. Right. So uh, what I do is- Because your kids are awful. My kids are great. Your what are you talking about? People, terrors. everyone and their moms. Your mom kids belong out. to Al-Qaeda. No, I'm sorry. What was it? <laughs> ISIS. There you go. Go ahead. So what we do is, uh, or what we did is, uh, you know, the kids go to bed. Yep. And I make a nice dinner for oh, just us. Yeah. And um, yeah. So we just hang That's out. That's it. You made dinner? I make a very. I, I but make, you make dinner all the time. That ain't special. I know, but I'm hoping, you know, that it was received well. Mm -hmm. And then my dad is able to come over. Oh. And so then he watches the kids or ah. while we, and then we go out yeah. uh, later on in the evening. There you go. There you go. So you treat her right by making her dinner like the chef that you are, because Jimmy really is the chef in the house. What are you trying to and say? Yeah, I, 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 no, you are. You're the chef in the house. I Am do. I wrong? If there was one chef in the house, who would it be? Well, I it's mean, the I, I, feel, I feel like we share that chef. Okay, that's what a good husband says, but in reality... She's my sous chef. Yeah, she's a sous chef. Okay. So, um, very good, man. That's how you do it. Take mm -hmm. care of your wife. Love your wife. And if you're married... Make her what she likes. If you're married, then pray that God gives you a wife someday. Or learn to be content, because uh, you're gonna, maybe you can be single for your whole life. That's, yeah. that's a possibility, Single, too. alone, whatever. You know. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Jesus is enough. That's what we'd say. Jesus is enough? Jesus is So enough. what'd you guys do for Valentine's? Oh, well, I took my wife. Uh, we grabbed uh, an overnight flight to France. I took her out to a very special dinner. Oh, that's so um, beautiful. And it was amazing. She was super surprised. She had no idea. that. No I idea. Her. It's like that, she still has no idea that that happened. No, she doesn't remember this, of course. But I, I did. <laughs> I flew her to Paris and we and had no, dinner. And neither does social media because I don't, I don't remember any photos. No, I don't want to brag about You don't want to brag. No, You're so humble. No, no, no. Because you don't, you don't mm -mm. share photos all every other time when no. you take your kids out no. for your daddy date nights no. or would you take your wife out for your mm. date night well this was this you... was so like intimate I thought like let's just go we'll go mm. to Paris we'll have dinner mm. we met with Johnny Depp and his one of his oh, wives or something oh okay yeah, so, but cool. I mean I'm sure for the sake of your wife mm -hmm. I mean you took photos while you were there you oh, just didn't yes. post them no, okay, show me one oh I will but when we're done with the podcast I'll oh no, I want to show I don't have you, it no, I no your on, phone's right there no I used it on my new Canon your new what my new Canon alright why don't you go ahead show me that Listen, guys, uh, bless your wife, all right? And if your wife really isn't into Valentine's Day, you know what? You can surprise her and be like, hey, I know Valentine's Day, Day is lame, but this is how much I love you. I'm going to use it as an excuse to bless you. And how about this? It's not too late. If you didn't do anything, take your wife out tomorrow night. Okay, it's too late. I'll no, tell it's you what, not no, no, too listen, late. Jimmy's wrong. If no. you screwed up, no. it is too late for Valentine's late. Day, but it's not too late. For you to try to make it up with a day. Right, it's too late for Valentine's. Yes, yes but you it's not too late to love your wife. No, it's never too late to love your wife, but you'll have to I'm make saying, up for blowing it on Valentine's and Day. And if you need recipes, I got recipes. Oh, man, Jimmy can make like uh, uh, ranchos. What, what, what do you call that? Huevos ranchos? Huevos ranchos, yes. Yeah, yes. Is that, is that rancheros or ranchos? Huevos rancheros. Yes, huevos rancheros. Okay, I can, uh, you make, I can, Jimmy, I can make, make a... Jimmy makes a mean breakfast burrito. Oh, it is mean. Like, yeah. it is, is it, you make it spicy? I make it spicy. I like that. I can do some chorizo and eggs. Okay. Uh, do you make anything white? That's my question. Do I make anything white? <laughs> <laughs> That's all very like Mexican sounding. Yeah. I like to uh I like to make a nice How about an lemon in a risotto basket? with Oh a, okay. Oh yeah, with a nice piece of tilapia oh, that goes over that it with asparagus on the side. Mm. Oh, oh it's amazing. Tilapia. I'm oh, not she down. loves it. All right. She loves it. Or when I make a Oops, she's from Canada. Uh, she's I like to make uh stuff. beef wellington. Okay. Beef wellington. Okay. Uh, she likes that. She loves when I make ribs. Yeah, See, that's how come you don't invite me over for ribs. I'm down because for ribs. Michelle loves ribs. Oh, she gets yeah, she's all over. She don't want to share. She no, I have to, I have to do one whole half slab for her. Half slab, that's it. Yeah, well, hold on. Half wait, slab. Half slab. That's, she can. She only eats a half slab. That's a big slab. No, what are you not. talking half about? Half slab is what my my kids eat a half. I can eat. I can eat more than a full slab. Okay, as a whole family, we eat a, a slab. That's oh, stop it. No, I'm being serious. You eat less than a half a slab. Yes. Stop how it. big is this? This is how big a slab okay, is. Look right, how big right, this is. All right, all right, yeah. That's all right, how big okay. a slab is. Uh, yeah, You're uh, telling me you can eat When you go to a restaurant this. and you order a full slab of ribs. No, if, if I'm at a restaurant, yeah. I pig out. Okay. But when I'm at home, no, it, it's a bit more reserved because you, you paid for it. Okay, like, you, you know paid what I mean? for it and 
And well, I want you don't want to be too. Filled. I don't want to be too filled. You don't be stuck. I don't want to be bloated. There might be some things going on later. Yeah, I, I, you know, for the after party, right. after dessert. Yeah, I get it. No, I, I'm for okay. the dessert. Okay. Dessert. I'm down. I'm down. Now we're I'm, we agree. Now right. you understand. Yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want to be. We're sympatico right now. Yes. All right. What are we talking about today? We are talking about the elder process. Why are we talking cares? Why are we talking about that? No, because everyone's been asking us this about this. This is like this. a niche thing. Like, we're talking about the elder process? Well, no, I don't think how it has to. I don't think, here, how about this? Elders? How about this? It doesn't have to just be about the elder process, though. Okay. Though we can highlight that. Why don't we talk about not only how do you help develop leaders, mm-hmm. but what about if you're looking to develop as a leader? What should you be doing? It still sounds boring, but let's do it. Are you serious? I think that's what? really interesting. I'm always serious. You're always serious? What am I not? Right now. Because okay, this is amazing. Go. This okay. is right in your wheelhouse. <laughs> it's so in your wheelhouse, you wrote three books. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Joe, start us off. Okay, so. When we talk about leadership, what are we talking about? Truth is, man, we get a lot of emails about leadership. How do you raise up How leaders? do you raise it? Uh, where do you guys, you guys, we're, you're a small church. Uh, although recently we did have like over 300 people. Wow, Sunday. way to boast there, I, I got to say, listen. Way to let the right hand right, know I, what I, the I'm left just, hand's doing. I'm just going to say right now. No. I, when I, we I, had th- so many people on a Sunday, people had to sit in other rooms of the church. That was pretty crazy. All right, let me just say this one thing. That was pretty crazy. In all the years that I've known Joe, and I'm being serious here. <laughs> okay. I have never once, this is the first time, and it happened on air, that I heard you boast in attendance. <laughs> Listen, I have man, never, crazy, 300 people, never, crazy. every time I've been with Joe, and we've been meeting with people and I'm talking about like, we'll meet with, with pseudo celebrity pastors and well-known pastors and authors. And they always ask how big's the church. Joe always lowballs it every single time. And I don't correct him cause I know that's just the way Joe is and he's not, but dang Joe, you had to let everybody know. All right, so listen, we are a mid-sized church. Oh, but now we're so large. Uh, we are a mid-sized church with a small, janky building. Thank you, Jesus. We Thank love you, our building, Jesus. But it and is a, if it you is a, so it is a hole in the wall. If you see um, fit to burn, let it, it down, burn it down and let the insurance give us a nice building, that'd Thank be great. you, Jesus. We would appreciate uh, that blessing. Let no one be hurt in the process. Listen, when we, when we started off and we had like 40 adults and 20 kids, um, when we got to 75, we were like, wow, we got 75, that's crazy. Woo! All right, so when, uh, when we had a pretty high attendance recently, it was like, wow, that, that's crazy. It's always crazy. It's all relative. Though. Like 300 is a mid-sized church, small to most people. Nobody cares, whatever. To us, it was a big deal. It was kind of neat. Well, and and it was kind what? of, it was really like, like frustrating in a way. I'm talking about like, not, chaotic is probably the better yeah, word. Yeah, it was chaotic. It was chaotic because we were like, I was grabbing kids. Bro, I, I saw that. I, I was gra- like it, for member families and stuff. You're like pulling kids out of the service. Get out of here, kids. Get you out of here, kid. No worship for no you. No worship for you with us today. <laughs> you, you, you haven't been sprinkled. You're not part of the covenant family of God. <laughs> <laughs> Baptists can do it. You Presbyterians can't do that. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> So, so we, we had, like, grabbed Pat, a bu- yeah we had to grab a bunch of kids. His family were sitting in one room with the sound piped in. Exactly, I your was, wife, and the kids were out in the in the voyeur in the foyer, and then we moved a bunch of kids and my wife and a couple other people, and myself. We went and took all the kids into one of the open uh, Sunday school rooms and let them color and draw, and we talked with them instead about, of worshiping. No, great idea. <clears throat> we uh, we took them through the Heidelberg Catechism. Oh, did you really? Yeah, oh, that's of course. We redeemed the time. All right. So, um, yeah, man, listen, be excited about where your church is at. You yeah. know what I mean? If, uh, if, if you've got 25 people, 50 people, 500 people, yeah. be excited about the people that God is bringing to you and celebrate it, man. When you see people converted, celebrate that. When you have higher attendance, celebrate that. Whatever it is, it's cool. But don't brag in comparison to other people because that's all nonsense. Yes. Like none of it matters, and you shouldn't be trying to compete, and we certainly don't try to do that because we can't because we're a small reform We're so Baptist small, church. and we're like, we're like landlocked. Oh, goodness sakes. We can't go right. anywhere. But we get a lot of requests about raising up leaders. In fact, one of the things that we tend to get points for uh, among denominational entities and whatnot is that we work hard at raising up leaders and sending them out to plant churches, to be pastors, or whatever. And so we wanted to talk about this because we, from the very beginning of Redeemer Fellowship, we have valued not only discipleship, but also with discipleship, raising up people to serve as leaders in their given fields. All right, now what's going on over there? Sorry, no, so it's a it's a it's a Facebook video. Why do you, why can't you no, stay off fa- of Facebook? Sh- 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 look, at this, look at this. Look at this. I'm not looking. I, here, no. Here's the thing. I'm turning it around. When you do a Facebook video, don't wear a shirt like that. Okay. He, okay. So how a, would you? What would you call that guy's that? name? What's that guy's name? No, T. don't J. say his name. T.J. Tamer. No. Okay. <laughs> 
So listen, TJ, if you listen to us, you're wearing a wife beater t shirt. No, right don't now. call it that. I well, that's what that's that. what it's called I don't, popularly. I don't, I don't like that. Okay, well that's what it is. It's called a Fine. wife beater. But don't do He's that in a video. Don't wear that shirt. In don't a video. wear that because you look. You know. None of us look good in that. All right. Well, some people look good in that. We don't look. good Well, in that. Paul Maxwell. Paul would look good. Paul in that. would look good. He's Ryan ripped. Hughley. Ryan Huckley. Huggy, 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 Huggy no, would look no. good. Huckley. Ryan Huckley. Huckley would look good. All right. So, um, raising up leaders. Whether you are one of those churches that has deacons and not yeah. elders, or whether you have a plurality of elders, or whether you make some kind of distinction between lay elders and staff elders or whatever, raising up leaders is an essential aspect of church health because you need to be able to delegate the work in the church so that more people are being properly cared for, and you need to be raising up and sending out people that God has called into ministry. Yep. It doesn't matter what size you are. We sent out our first church, church planter when we were under 100. We said, like, you're going. Let's get, let's get this thing going. So we sent out Jamie Page. Get off Facebook, son. I am. I'm off. Oh, yeah. I can see what you're looking at. I can tell. You could tell? What am I looking at? I can see it in the reflection of your big, glassy eyes. Keep going. All right, so people have already tuned out because this is so annoying because you keep looking at it. No, I'm not looking at it. I can tell. Oh, okay, keep going. I'll leave you alone. Go. So when we're talking about raising up leaders, essentially, what does it mean, Jimmy, to raise up a leader in the church? I think there needs to be some sort of intentional, I want, I'm going to use the word discipleship, right? Like it, there needs to be some intentionality in seeking and finding those individuals that have been gifted and called by God to help in either serving or shepherding God's people. And I, I'm using those two words differently. Right. I'm saying serving in the sense of, of deacon, and I'm using shepherding in the sense of elder slash teacher. Right. Or you know what? No, just say shepherding. I'm just going to use that word because we have people that are teaching that are not elders. Right. Because they're they're in charge of like in, in community groups. Those are right. those are teaching positions, I guess. People are called to different kinds of leadership in yes. a variety of capacities, right? So you have women who will be called to lead. I yes. know. Listen, we're complementarian. Most of you are probably complementarian, but you have. But women. we're not the weird kind of complementarian. That's the, that's no. The we don't hate the ladies. I know. I want to make sure when we say your idea. We should, for those we should know that the word is getting like beat up. Exactly. And so I want to say the word you think it is is not what it's supposed to be and what we are. Well, we are, compared to your word, we are a soft complementarian. Yeah, that's, we're happy to say that. A yeah. uh, complementarian is not a biblical word. It's a helpful word, but it's, you know, it's, been, a, it's been beat up. And, and It's been abused there's itself. Been bad examples of so-called complementarian And we've churches. had complementarians make some really ridiculous statements. No, I want, you know, sinful I, and stupid. You know I, I've wanted to do a podcast on that for a long time, yeah. and I'm still like, part of it is it's so emotional for me. Yeah. It, I'm, so, I'm still working through my own feelings right. because I, 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 I'm not gracious towards some. Yeah. Some people I don't, I don't think I should be gracious to because they're just abusive. Mm -hmm. Like who? Uh, do you want me to really say Why it now? Why not? Go ahead, sir. What are you thinking about? <clears throat> I think it is abusive to tell a wife to go who is being beaten by her husband that... Physically abused. It physically anyway. abused that to serve her husband means to go back home and to submit to him. So what should a church do in a situation where um, a, a husband or a spouse is abusing the other spouse? Get in and get them out and right. call the police. Now, uh, yeah. You I am down with that. I, that's where I'm at. Yeah, 100%. Get, in, get them out and call the police. You protect, you defend, you love, you care for, you shepherd. I have, I, me and another pastor have gone to a house where we have told a boyfriend, guess who's leaving today? Yeah, exactly. You're, guess who's getting out? You're leaving. And he's like, who are you guys? And we're like, we're the pastors. <laughs> and it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. You can't make me leave. Oh, watch me. Uh, yeah, we can because you're leaving now. So grab a bag, get your junk, and hit the road. So anyways, I want to do that. I want to do an episode on that. Uh, what actual complementarianism is. Yeah. Even, my, even Michelle has had conversations recently with, uh, with women right. who have asked, like, what, is, what does it really mean to, to submit, right? Right. Because they are getting this idea that submission is, like... No voice, no, no voice, input, no input, no partnership. Exactly. Like they're just there to serve, uh, to serve, 
to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen right. and to make a sandwich. First of all, barefoot, that's not good for your posture. I'm just saying. I'm Don't saying do that's, that. the, that's the way they say it. Right. But, and so Michelle trying to share like, no, 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 no. That's not what this is. Right. And that's not what, what it's supposed to be. It's we not need what to do Jim a, and I have. Complementarians need to do a much better job of articulating mm-hmm. what, we, what we mean and believe by various roles and responsibilities in the church and in the home. And, and, and I'm, by better, I mean more biblical. Yes. And we need to do a better job in the church of raising up women to lead in their called roles. Exactly. Because as complementarians, we should be heralding the call to protect women better and to defend them better, right. better and to see them flourish more. All right. Sorry. We're going to get to that topic at some point. Okay. So let, let's, let's get back this. to this. So how, let's just, the, the easiest way to do this is to just talk about how we do it at Redeemer. Now, this is not the only way. It's not the best way. It's just how we are trying well, to do it. I feel like it's it. the best way. Well, it's better than most. Um, it's how we're trying. It's doing something. If we're doing something, and we'll, we'll make mistakes, and we'll fix it as we go along. So, the way that we raise up leaders at Redeemer is, um, first of all, no one will be even noticed as a potential leader if they are not a member and if they are not in a community group. Exactly. Why? <clears throat> well, how, why are we going to raise, I mean, I, I know it sounds, this is going to sound weird when I say it, but why waste time on someone that's not committed right. to the body? Yeah. So membership in terms of they've made a covenant commitment. You are my people. I'm with you. Hold exactly. me accountable. I'm going to hold you accountable. Exactly. And even in, and then also in CG, that goes deeper than, than membership. Yeah. Because you're willing to come under the authority of another, like mm-hmm. as far as I'm talking about the teaching authority of, yeah. of a CG leader who's under the authority of the elders. Right. You're willing to be accountable to a group of people. You're willing to grow with a group of people. Open up, be transparent. You're, exactly. You're willing to actually, I guess, live life. I don't know how else to no, word it than that. I know you don't like together. that, yeah. but I'm trying to think through of a way to putting it. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. So we don't even consider somebody because you can't really recognize somebody as a potential leader, if they're not a member committed, and if they're not in a CG where they're having relationships that are being watched and experienced yes. and all of that. So now, when we have somebody who is a member in a community group, the community group or CG leader will recognize this person has potential or yes. a clear calling or whatever it is. They'll recognize it, and then they come to the elders, and what do they say? They say, hey, uh, this individual, I think, has potential. All right. So, for example... Tim Smith yep. was a community group leader, mm-hmm. uh, developed a lot of our CG uh, training stuff, Yep, and he said, Brian Malcolm, that guy has potential. That guy could be a great leader. <laughs> well, that was a pretty good call since Brian is now a pastor in our right. church. Well, listen, I talked to Brian about this stuff early on, and he was like, no way, that's not me, I'm not called to that. Well, Tim, as a CG leader, also saw it, and I said, great, uh, s- feel it out. Invite him to lead a group while you're there under your tutelage. Mm-hmm. Watch him. See how it goes. And so Brian began to, uh, he, so we, the elders were informed. So we, we knew. We were like, yes, we agree. Pursue that guy. And that also means, though, that person's invited to leadership lab. Once, once a CG leader recognizes a person and the elders agree, then that person is invited to what we call leadership lab. Now, we didn't come up with that. We stole that from another church. But Leadership Lab, for us, is a regular gathering on a Saturday where we bring all of our current and potential leaders who want to grow in their ongoing development. We gather them together so that they have an opportunity to teach or preach and be evaluated, but also to receive ongoing instruction in theology and practical ministry. That's right. So this, for us, Leadership Lab, is diverse, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not, like you said, it's not just... It's not just current, for pastors. Yeah, it's not just for current, and it's not just for future. <clears throat> but right now, it's it's not just for men mm-hmm. either, right? It's it's for women that are current or upcoming leaders. Now, uh, you know, a lot of guys are like, whoa, 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 hang on a second. Yeah. Because I, I put up, like, uh, like a month ago or so, I put up a picture of... Uh, Deacon Dan teaching at Leadership Lab, yep. and then my hot, and then my hot wife uh, yeah. teaching right after. Yeah, she's way better looking than Dan. Oh yeah, Dan's, yeah, Dan's yeah. in good shape, but uh, my, but my wife's better looking. So um, and people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Your wife is teaching at a Leadership Lab. What's yeah. up? Yeah, she's she's teaching at a Leadership. She's not preaching. 
right? And it's not well, it's not preaching. the well, she's kind but it's of, not the kind local, of, she was kind of preaching. But it's not the local assembly gathered together on the Lord's day. No, no, she's not in a pastoral capacity. No authority. No, she's not a shepherd of the, uh, of she's the not church. A shepherd right. of the church. So what was she doing? She was encouraging, exhorting, exhorting, teaching, teaching, preaching. But I thought the scripture said she didn't do that. But nuance, you, I think you have to define that better, though. Yeah. Like, again, we're saying that that we're saying that the office of elder mm-hmm. is not for women. Right. That as complementarians, that is one of the things that we believe. Yes. Um. So leadership lab, though. Leadership lab, though, is she's still being groomed, or not? Maybe not groomed. She's being trained, and no, that's not even that right word for yeah, her. It's, but, sure, it's trained. It's encouraged to do what. To, to lead other women. Right. So when we have people in leadership lab, what we're doing is, is we are encouraging them and helping them to develop in their various roles and gifts so that they can then lead in their appropriate spheres. Yes. So my wife, my wife this year is speaking at five different churches in different places. And we try to limit it so we're not gone yeah, too much. Yeah. So I'm going to five, she's going to five. So she she'll will, be at like Joel Olstein's church on a she Sunday. Will not, she'll be she will over, not be there. No, no. no she'll be at she, MacArthur's church on a not, Sunday. Oh, she she could, but she wouldn't. Uh, well, she would probably, but she ain't gonna ask her um, because she has tattoo and uh, she has she belly, has a tattoo. She has oh, nose I remember piercing, that. Uh, I remember that belly the piercing. tattoo. It's yeah. a nice tattoo. So it's like it's similar to yours, actually. The one that I uh, I know when I, yes. I pulled off Jimmy's shirt. Stop at it! The, Don't tell people that story. <laughs> I pulled off Jimmy's shirt at the tattoo <laughs> shop today. No, Dude, at the cigar shop. Tattoo. I did not know you had that back tattoo. All right, Joe. There's certain <laughs> things that we don't have to talk about on air. So I'm not talking awesome. about the stain. I didn't talk about the stain. Okay, all right. We'll leave the stain alone. Okay, but okay. you go ahead and do that, but right, I can't well, that's talk a little about the stain. Different. Right. That's different. Nobody knows what you're talking about right now. I know, but now everybody knows about everybody. T- okay. But now I, I, have, know- I, I have a birthmark. No, don't tell people. I have a birthmark on my leg <laughs> way up high. <laughs> And back in the 80s, when I was a little kid, you wore those short shorts, and you could see this little round birthmark on my upper thigh in the back. To some people, it looked like a penny. To other people, it looked like a, a poop stain. Oh, like a poop stain, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a poop stain birthmark on my, that, that my God-given tattoo. Thank you for bringing that up to me. Okay. FYI, uh, that, that there is poop a stain. That, a no, I know, but uh, there's a picture. But that poop stain yeah. also has a Twitter account. Does it really? Pastor Poop State. Does it really? Yes, it does. Oh, I hate you guys. <laughs> You're so awful. All right. So, anyways, we want to raise up people to to exercise their gifts of leadership in their appropriate spheres, whether that's in the home or in the workplace or in speaking. Like my wife speaks all you know, literally all over the country now. Um, you know, people that are writing books. We want our men and women to flourish in their leadership roles. So we put together a leadership lab. Yeah. So men and women have the opportunity to teach or preach or whatever, and then they get evaluated. We put out this evaluation sheet. Everybody listens, and they give feedback. And they say, here's what worked, here's what didn't work. If you're going to do it again, change this. We talk about it, and then one of the elders will teach on a subject as well. So we do that regularly. And then we have an additional preaching class for those that are called to the pastoral ministry where we are raising up preachers, same format. They preach. And then someone teaches on preaching and leadership in a particular capacity. So those are so we go from uh, membership to community groups to leadership lab, and then out of leadership lab, who do we find, Jimmy? What, what, what kind of what kind of people in terms of the church life and what we're looking for? Who do we find in leadership lab? I mean, we find people that to lead CGs. We have we find people to lead uh, like women's ministry and women's Bible studies, uh, and we find people to that are called maybe to preach. Yeah. To we preach and to shepherd. We, we got uh, some you know, baller preachers. I feel like we, yeah, we absolutely. Our preachers do. kill other churches. I'll just tell you right now. We've got, so, so I'm a preacher. I'm okay. Uh, Jimmy is. No, a, you're a great preacher. Okay, I'm an it. amazing preacher. Jimmy, I never said that. Jimmy, oh, okay. Jimmy is an amazing preacher. We have, uh, Pat just preached a 
killer. And Pat would say, my gift is not preaching. Uh, Pat teaches, he does counseling, he does, he does discipleship. He's really good at discipleship. But Pat just preached a killer message. Everybody loved it. Then we've got guys like Oliver and Travell and Tim and Scott Shipferling. Like, and these guys are diverse ages and whatnot. And so it's not like we made them great preachers. They were gifted and we just give them opportunities and we help them, we encourage them. Yeah. So we send these guys out all over the place to preach at any church that's interested. And because now we have a reputation of having good preachers, they go everywhere. Absolutely. What are you reading? Nothing. You're, I can see you surfing the web. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm looking up uh, that one article we did just as far as leadership development. All right, go ahead. You keep looking for that. Yeah. So that's what we do with Leadership Lab. So out of that, we get all of those. We also get potential deacons and elders, church planters, and we get potential. We've sent guys out that we haven't supported as our own church plants, but we've sent guys out as church planters. We've sent guys out to pastor other churches, and we're getting ready to do that again. I think we'll, having some, we'll be having some other guys that go out to pastor and some guys that will go to seminary and then some guys that will be planting churches. We're really excited about that. So you've got to have some sort of mechanism by which you can do it. And the, and the truth is... You don't, have, you don't have to be a big church. In fact, I believe, and I think, I think evidence bears this out, most of the big churches do a pretty poor job of raising up and equipping and sending leaders and planters. I think smaller churches like us and smaller tend to do a better job of raising up people because there is more opportunity to preach, to teach. There is more opportunity for people to uh, see their gifts and to then plug them in. Small churches can do way more than they think. And in yeah. my estimation, small churches can do more than big churches in terms of leadership development. That's my conviction. Now, why do you think that is? Is that because they're able to kind of focus more on the individuals? Like they can recognize them better? It's not. I it's, think so. Like, I wonder if it's also because a bigger church, it sounds funny to say this, but like a smaller church has a bigger pool to draw from. Well, and it, I mean that because a bigger church is not interested in raising up from within, but because they can they draw people in by their size and by their can pay. Right. I I think in general, and what, here's what I've seen, even in our own denomination and networks, um, larger churches tend to hire from without, and they don't oftentimes have a clear path for the congregant or the church member to become a leader. It is, it is oftentimes a bit of a good old boys club when it's a big church. It's hard to be recognized. It's hard to be able to see. In fact, I was just talking with a guy recently who said, I go to a church, there's you know a lot of people at this church, and there's a lot of gifted, talented people who have a lot of opportunity yeah. to give it to serve. You were there for this. And there is, there is no opportunity for them to actually be plugged in, to use their gifts. Because the church is so big and, there, and and there's only a few opportunities, whereas a smaller church, like we give our guys an opportunity opportunities to preach throughout the year. I'm not, I'm jealous of my pulpit in that I want to make sure that the pulpit is filled by men who know the truth and good theology and preach the word. Absolutely. Outside of that, I'm out. I'll peace out and let any of our guys go because I know that no one will be hungry afterwards. Everyone's going to be fed. Everyone's going to be full. And it's not about me. It's not about, the, it's not about the preaching pastor. It's about the truth. So we get any of our other guys up there, and it's awesome. And they get excited when our other guys come up. They're super pumped about it. A yeah. lot of churches really get, yeah, they really get kind of like, they get amazed too, right? And that, I think that's that, the... That, that's, I, listen, we've seen that. One, I think it's, it's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. But I think it's also a testimony to the leadership development of the church, right? Like the, the structure and the process that the elders have put in place and the priority that they have had in raising up leaders to go. Here's the thing. People ask like, why do you guys have so many good preachers? Why do you guys have so many church planters? You're a small church. You don't have uh, you know, the resources to do like what other churches, why do you have them? And the r truth is we don't have an answer for that. But yeah. from the very beginning, we've prayed, we want to be a church that sends other church planters. We want to be a church planting church. And we didn't say that as if it's like, oh, that's the right thing to say. We yeah. meant it. And so we prayed, and God keeps giving us called, capable, godly people that we can plug in. We've got amazing men and women in this church. Oh, my are, goodness. Are, are godly and articulate and theological, and they can get it done. Absolutely. So, like, I'm just, I'm ready to go. Like, I, I, I would, I remember one time, Rick Warren got 
a lot of people upset because he put out a tweet and said, so, I don't remember what he said, but it was something along the lines of, our church members are the best church members. Are, they're better than your church members. It was something like that. And all he meant to do was to brag on his people. He loves yeah, his yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, he loves his people. And everybody got butt hurt about it. Like, hey, you, you, why do you say that? Well, and, and here's the thing. If you really don't think that your church members are the best, then you shouldn't be at that church. Or you got some jacked up churches. I mean, honestly, you could, I mean, no, there I mean, are some yeah, jacked up churches. I, I, yeah, I guess. But I just feel like for him bragging is, is him like he was he, boasting in the same way that Paul would boast. That's in it. Christians he really loves churches. his people. He yeah. really sees them. I mean, I don't know. If, if you don't think your people are the best, then you're at the wrong church. Man, here's the thing. We have a dumpy building. Thank you, God. But it's Thank a dumpy, you, Jesus, bu- for our building. dumpy building. Um, we don't have a big show. We don't have good lighting. We don't no. have any of that. I would never be embarrassed for the president of our denomination or our convention or any bigwig to join us. Whether I was preaching or not, I'd be like, check it out. God's at work here. Let's, let, let's worship. I would never be embarrassed. And it's not because we're perfect or awesome. It's because I really believe that we have the, the, the God of the universe, the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the people who really believe this working together. So I'm pumped. I'm pumped up every Sunday. And people like say, like, what? Like, you know, oh, every Sunday is awesome for you. Like, you, like oh, what a great Sunday. Like, everything, you never have a bad Sunday. Oh, of course I have bad Sundays. Of course I sometimes think that my preaching is terrible. In fact, most Sundays, I don't feel good about my preaching. Um, most Sundays I feel like, ah, you know, whatever. Uh, every podcast that we do, how do I end every podcast? What do I say? Oh, that was terrible. Yeah. I, I, was, I, I, just, I just naturally don't feel good about anything. Yeah. But ultimately, I recognize that God is in it. So I don't let my thoughts and my feelings cloud all of that. You can be raising up leaders. Single pastor, solo pastor, hardly any leadership. You got a small number of people. Look at your church. Who's there? Who yeah. has potential? If there's potential, then it's your responsibility to grab them and to invest in them and to essentially replace yourself. Work exactly. yourself out of a job. That, that's what we should be doing. I think Keller said that. Work yourself out of a job. Raise up people that, so that they can do what you're called to do so that if you die or have to retire or whatever, the church is good. The church is going to continue. Absolutely. So it's not based around a personality. No, because once that personality goes, like they leave, yeah. they go to another church, or, I mean, uh, they stumble and fall. Right. You know, then it, there needs to be other people that are ready to kind of take the reins and, and move forward, right? Right. And I know we've kind of discussed this a bit. You know, one of the things I think is encouraging, and I think it's a testimony, again, to the grace of God and the, and the uh, the wisdom and leadership of the elders, that if Joe, so if something happened to Joe... Hit by a bus. Redeemer Fellowship would not skip a beat. No way. Like, we'd miss Joe. And we would. there would be a huge... A no, there would be a huge vacancy. And I, and I mean that... Big, big funeral, probably. Well, it'll be short. Mm, short. Okay. <laughs> short. All right. <laughs> In case you didn't get it. Short. I get. I get it. I get it. You're making the finger gesture too short. All right, go. Uh, because the, his preaching, the, you know, God has gifted him in such a way to preach and proclaim. Church and be to fine. lead. But I think what the church would 100 would be able to move and, and, and forward. That's, and that's not always true, right? At different stages of life, like when you're yes. when you have a new church or a new leader, things are a little more delicate. But we've worked really hard to make sure that this church is not built around a personality. Yes, um, and that that. That it really is about God and the gospel and the people gathered together. I have every confidence that when I check out of here for a bigger church and a bigger paycheck, that you oh, guys really? Is will that be, what you're going to do? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> bigger church, bigger paycheck. Did I say that out loud? Um, I ain't going anywhere. Uh, I'm not interested in going. No, I ain't going. I want to die here. And uh, if Jimmy doesn't kill me, it should be a long time. Um, you, but you. The point is, is that every church can invest in and raise up leadership. And I, I'll, I'll be honest, the small churches that aren't doing it just don't know that they can. That's it. That's the truth. I feel like sometimes they just think, like, uh, it's not worth their time. Like, they, they already have this, like, defeatist attitude that, oh, I don't have enough people here, or I don't have enough time, or no one's going to want to work with me or listen to me. The, the, you just find those one or two, three people and invest in them and let it grow. People that are called to leadership are hungry. Yeah. They want to be mentored, discipled, and they want to be useful. They want to be used. So you need, 
you need to actually get grab them and say, all right, let's do this. Let's make sure that you have the opportunities. Uh, c- c- listen, preaching lab is easy. You know, here, here's how you do preaching lab. Ready? All right, you get three guys, and you let one guy preach 20 minutes, and then you evaluate him. And if he doesn't know how to preach, teach him. If you're the preacher, yeah. you know how to do it. Your whole, like a, a, every pastor, every lead pastor, every senior pastor should have as a part of his responsibility the identification and the development of future leaders. Exactly. It needs to be a part of it. And so, and now, to be honest, all of our pastors are looking for that. All of our elders at Redeemer are looking at that, whether they're staff or volunteer. And once we identify it, we try to plug them in, whether that's for deacons, um, elders, or uh, teachers, preachers, whatever. We're constantly on the lookout for that. Because what do you want to do? You want to replicate the exactly. work of God in your church. Listen, I love Redeemer Fellowship. I have never been a part of a church that is as healthy. I, this is the first church in my life, in my life, where I can be myself. Oh, yeah. Hey, what? No, I'm being serious. Like this is, a, this is a place where all of us can be us, and no one is going to, like, they don't judge us. Right. So now if we screw up, they're going to call us on it. Oh, yeah. If we're sinning, they're going to rebuke us. But you can actually be transparent and be cared for. This is the best church I've ever been a part of. I love this church. And what, what do I want? I want to see this church replicated. Now, it's going to look different in Naperville. We've got one going there. We've got one in Evanston. That one's going to look different. We've got one that we sent a guy out to DeKalb. Mm-hmm. They all look different. But the similarity is gospel, doctrine, transparency. I mean, it's really good. What are you smiling at? What, am I, what do you mean? Go ahead. What are, what are you thinking? No, I just I was just thinking about the the... The, your, you know, the Twitter handle for Pastor Poop State. I was okay, just thinking about that. going back to that. I know. I'm just thinking about it. Hey, listen. This and is I why... realized no. uh, it actually has a website as well. It does not. PastorPoopStain.com. It absolutely is not unless you just created it while we were doing this podcast. No. I, well, well, who does, who does you that? You online. I'm going to look it up. What? Who does that? <laughs> who does Did you just... Re- I'm going to... I have never... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but if it redirects to my blog, I'm going to punch you right now on <laughs> on air. So hang on. Hang no, on. I'm just saying. I can't Pastor believe it. PastorPoopStain.com. Yep. All right, get ready, Jimmy. If that goes to the blog, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> get out of here. Is he going to no, punch you? It. <laughs> Jerk. It. It's not, I don't know who right did there. it. I don't know who did it. I don't know who did it. All I, I know, know is. I know no, you did it while we were sitting here. So that's why you were so like <laughs> disconnected. We're supposed to be a serious podcast, and you're, do, you're putting PastorPoopStain.com. <laughs> Oh, I'm there. Guess who's never writing a book with you about friendship? Guess that's never going to happen. No, come on. We're doing our book. Uh huh. Come on. All right. Whatever. Whatever, dude. All right. Raise up leaders who won't create stupid websites that redirect to your blog. PastorPoopStain.com. I don't, dummy. I, I can't even believe that's even a thing. Yeah. Who did that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the speed of the internet. I don't know who did that. All right. So, what about, what about, uh, let, let's try and wrap it up with this. When we're raising up elders. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What are we at? No, no, no. But first, you have to talk about. Uh, I think when we're talking about raising up leaders, yeah. there are lots of resources out there, and one of them I think you have just done. And I think it's a, these are great resources for not it's just. All right. No, I think they're really good resources, Joe, for raising up leaders and for membership orientation. And that's right. the three books that you just put out with Moody and uh, for the church. Okay. Can you tell us yeah, about your books? Yeah, no, right. for real. They're good I know, books. I know, I know. All right, so um, I've written three small books. Jimmy likes to call them booklets. But if you tape them all together, it's like one book. So eh, I wrote a book. Anyways, um, these three books are on, essentially, they're on ecclesiology. One's called The Life of the Church. One's called The Character of the Church. And the other is called The Heart of the Church. And these three books are designed to be read together. And they are essentially what I've been teaching uh, about the church and to our newcomers for the past 10 years. Yeah. And so this hits on the heart of the church being the gospel in its various facets. Um, what does the scripture say the heart of the church is? What is the gospel? What does it mean? And then, you know, what is the character of the church? What makes a church a real church? Yeah. Um, what do you have to have in place? And so I argue that there are five distinctives that have to be in place for a church to actually be a New Testament church. And then the life of the church is, is what does the church do? Like, so if the heart of the church is what the church believes, and if the character of the church is what the church is, then the life of the church is what does the church do? 
What does church life look like together? So these three books are meant to be brought together. They are ideal for church leadership. They are ideal for discipleship, and especially for people coming into the church who don't have much background there. These would be really helpful. I think that they're easy to read, easily accessible, but I believe they will be richly rewarding. So if you go to doctrineanddevotion.com slash three books, yep. there you can see the books and you can pre-order them on Amazon. Um, and we'll be doing some other pre-orders through Moody Publishers and all of that and for the church. Uh, so check them out. Those will be helpful. Absolutely. I think. No, I think they really will, Joe. I'm, I'm actually uh, was able to look at the advanced copies uh, and plus, you know, this material that you and I have discussed, like I've heard you talk about it. I've heard your heart on it. Uh, and I just know it, it's going to be extremely useful for churches and upcoming, like those of you that desire to be leaders uh, and those of you that want to uh, kind of put together a leadership curriculum in your church, as well as those that want to introduce what your church is about in your membership orientations. Yeah. I think these are, these are just fantastic resources all around. I, I, part of what I had in mind here, too, is also for um, uh, you know, churches that need everything that you were just saying, but also church plants. Uh, church plants, and I, these are things that I wish we had in place early on that I could give to everybody. Yes, So yes. That's why I wrote them. All right, so let's just talk a little bit. We'll wrap it up with this. Elders, when we're doing elder development, what, Jimmy, you've been an elder candidate for like five years now. No, it's not It's only five. supposed to take 12 months. Jimmy's taken like a few years now. I have not um, taken a few it's years. It's a long time. I don't remember. It's, it's taken me like 14 months. 15. Okay. So um, what does elder candidacy look like? Well, before yeah. we do that, let me, let me tell you how it works. Yeah, good. For a, a person to become an elder candidate... Now, of course, the church can recommend anybody they want to the elders, and the elders are always looking for uh, men that can serve as pastors slash elders. Same thing for us. And uh, once we identify who could serve as elders, and we have many people that can serve as elders, we then look for those whose gifts and strengths will complement the weaknesses of the current elder team. Yes. So in the case of Brian and Jimmy, Pastor Brian and future Pastor Jimmy, we were, we were looking at guys who not only meet the qualifications for the elders in First Timothy 3, but also guys specifically who have strengths like organization, management, problem solving, and systems to complement our weaknesses in those areas. So if all they had were those competencies, but were not primarily shepherds, pastors, as described by Scripture, we wouldn't be interested. But because we see those qualities in them, and they have those gifts, those are the guys we approach to balance out the current elder team. Absolutely. So we go to them and we say, listen, we are interested in you serving potentially as an elder. Are you interested? We talk to their wives. We interview their wives. Are you, how do you feel about this? We figure it all out. Once everybody's on the same page, then we go to the congregation and we say, for example, Pastor or Jimmy Fowler yep. is a person that we are bringing into elder candidacy. You will have a year, or in Jimmy's case, a few years. No, uh, not a few to, years. Stop to, it. To watch him as an elder candidate, you will be able to see him in ministry roles. You will be able to watch him function. If you have any questions or concerns, you can talk to him or any of the elders. But you'll be able to see him up front and in play. And during that 12 months, or in Jimmy's case, a couple of years, you will That's be able to see, uh, we will be able to test him. We'll be teaching him. He'll have to read a lot of books. He'll have to write a, a, a big yep. paper. He'll have to do an oral exam. And during that whole time, uh, that person is functioning as an elder candidate in real ministry. Yep. So, Jimmy, talk about the elder candidacy for people that want to know, like, what is it that you actually <clears throat> do? Is it, are, you, are you just reading books and then, like, reporting, or what's going on? No, I think the part that I love about it is that there is, I guess, on-the-job training, right? Would you call it that, mm -hmm. Joe? where I'm part of the elder meetings and yeah, I'm part of the elder meetings. Uh, and so at the elder meetings, I get to kind of hear what's going on. I get to see the discussion and I'm encouraged to be part of the discussion. You know, one of the things Joe told me early on was we brought you in to give your opinion. So give your opinion, mm -hmm. contribute. Don't just sit there. And I, that took me a while at first to uh, kind of feel comfortable sharing my thoughts. Uh, and so we, we were able to do that. And um, for the longest time, Jimmy, like, um, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to say, I don't want to speak out of turn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would be so if, timid. If it's okay. We're like, shut up. Just say it. Do it. That's why you're here. Speak. Yeah. I would sit there and like have this like long You'd apologize intro. before you said something. Yeah. 
So now I just say it and uh, we ignore it. Uh, well, no, not well, <laughs> you ignore it. Others don't. The rest of the elders don't. But um, so, yeah, so I get to be part of that discussion. So you're in the elders meeting. I'm in the elders meeting. What else are you doing? But I also, though, go along with the elders in counseling. Right. So I'll go to certain meetings that are going on. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll go with them to visitation. Mm-hmm. I'll go with them as they pray for people. Even under in certain church discipline cases. In church discipline cl- cases, I've been part of, uh, like I've been with them as they've visited and, and counseled certain couples. And you've participated in that, though. I've participated in that. And then one of them, actually, I kind of, along with one of the other elders, right. we were kind of the point people you took for lead, that. Yeah. We took lead on that. Yeah, you and Pastor Jeff. Yeah, and... Um, and so, yeah, I would talk with, with Pastor Jeff about that afterwards and beforehand. And Pastor kinda, Jeff is amazing. And he was really helpful. He'd, you know, he'd call me and he'd say, okay, here's, you know, I'd like to get together with these, with these guys. Here's what, it, what I would like to say. Uh, what do you, you know, let's talk about that. Then afterwards he would say, hey, this went well. How, did, how do you feel that went? Um, here's what I thought you did well. Here's maybe something to kind of think about for the future. Uh, so, yeah, there's really a lot of on the job training right like it's and one of the things i appreciated about redeemer is it wasn't just come and be a part of a board executive meeting it was come and be a part of shepherding god's people and helping them to cling to christ more Mm -hmm. yeah uh, listen and and i'll speak about the elders not myself but the other elders we have awesome elders. No, you guys. You, we, they are yeah, they're quite, good men. And I'm including you and Rob as elder candidates. You guys are good men, godly No one men. makes fun of Rob. No. What the heck? Why do you guys make fun of me? What are you talking about? Rob's been an elder candidate for how long? <laughs> okay, well, listen. He's actually been years. All right, uh, not that long. But, uh, yes, it has. Right, listen, that's a whole other thing. He came on before me. Yeah, he did. And he's going to keep going after me. You, he had to push pause on the elder candidacy. If a guy, if a guy says, "Hey, listen, um, I don't want to duck out, but I've got to take care of family issues or life issues," we let them. Oh uh, well, now I just feel like a jerk. Yeah, now, yes. Yeah. Now so, I just feel like a jerk. Well, that's appropriate. So I um, love you, Rob. Rob is awesome. Rob, Rob is. I'll tell you what, Rob. Rob works. and I have our own All channel right, on Slack. I'm going to tell. I bet you do. We do. It's elder. It's elder candidates only channel. <laughs> It's just Rob and I talking about If you about guys you. aren't using Slack to communicate among your leadership team, <laughs> you're losers. All right. Um, Rob Warford uh, was one of the guys who shared the gospel with me when I was lost. How Check amazing is that? Th- there are people in this church who pray Like, how for, good is God? The, like, you know what I mean? Like, they're, 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 there's a couple, I'll call them elderly. They probably wouldn't appreciate that, but they definitely are. There is an, uh, an older couple and uh, amazing, godly people. They were praying for me to come to Jesus before I had ever believed. Wow. And Rob was one of the first guys to, um, one of the early guys to push the gospel at me in direct and indirect ways. Um, and now we're all at the same church together. Pretty awesome. All this to say, wow. the, the el- and the elder candidates will preach, they'll teach, they have ministry responsibilities and oversights while they're held accountable. And then during that 12, or in Jimmy's case, few years process. It's not a few years for me. They are being watched and observed. <sighs> And then what will happen is, so, so far the congregation has not been uh, directly involved outside of observing. At the end of this process, if the elders are satisfied, if Jimmy can finish his paper, which we're not sure about, and if he can pass the oral exam, which well, we'll have to see. Well, I, can, it, I, can, I can finish uh, it. I'll if, finish if, it. If, if Jimmy can do all of that, then we will present him to the congregation for a vote. We are a Baptist church, so we have congregational policies. And so we'll say, the elders love Jimmy. We think he's done the work. You've watched him for a year, or in Jimmy's case, a few years. It's and, not been a few years. Stop and, saying a few years. And then, how do you vote? And the church will vote, yes or no, on, on Jimmy becoming an elder. So um, that's how we do it. It's not the only way. It's definitely a Baptist way to do yeah. it. But um, we work hard at it because we recognize that we have good people who can serve in a way that will actually bless the church. And what we don't want are a bunch of guys that are just like me, because that would be disaster. Oh my or gosh. Or a bunch of guys be. like Jimmy, which would be, we have to have it a diversity. Would be really successful. We, we have to have a diversity <laughs> of guys who are all called, meet the qualifications, but have different gifts that can complement one another. So that's how we do it. We hope you guys are serious about raising up leaders in your churches, because regardless of your size or your location, do you really think that God has put you as the only leader in that church yeah god is certainly god. don't be so arrogant to think that right and, and, and or don't be so unbelieving and, or and, naive. and doubtful 
God has given you somebody to work with. Work yes. with them. Maybe they'll be a Sunday school teacher. Maybe they'll be an elder. Maybe, maybe they will be a church planter. But they are called by God to do something. Identify them, pour into them, and see what God does. Big thanks to Justin Bond of J. Bond Media, the audio-visual wizard of Doctrine and Devotion. If you've got any audio, visual, or photography needs, hit up jbondmedia.com, and he will hook you up. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head on over to our website, doctrinedevotion.com. Click on the sign-up page there. You can uh, fill out the form and uh, get on our email list where we give special content to just our email subscribers. You can click on the contact us page, send us an email with suggestions, ideas, or your critiques. And also you can hit up the store where you can get on some D&D gear and register for the conference. Fresh pod. Well, no, you forgot. Honest five-star review on iTunes. Uh, or podcast provider. All right. And uh, register. Yeah, the conference. Do the conference thing. Pre-sale books. Buy my books. Buy right. books. Then, Fresh Pod. Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday. And articles on Wednesdays. Articles on Wednesday. And you know what? If you sign up for a mailing list, oh, yeah. there will be new, fresh, special, awesome content only for our mailer subscribers. Maybe Email every sub- Friday a, a video thing. I don't know. Maybe. I'm just Maybe. saying it's going to be good. You ain't going to find it on any of those other janky podcasts. Stop Join it. Join our mailing list. Good stuff is coming. Later. Later.